So on October 25th, Xinba sold 2.3 million US dollars in one night, netting himself just under a million US dollars. But three weeks later, a revelation would be made that would completely upend Xinba's multi-million dollar e-commerce empire. If he's found peddling fake goods, he could get arrested. Hey guys, it's Sarah and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So because of the pandemic, online shopping has exploded and it's here to stay. But the problem with that is that when you walk into a store and buy something, you can look at it, touch it, feel it, check if it's real. But when you're buying online, you really kind of just have to trust the person who's selling it to you. Moving forwards, that's gonna be something that sellers have to figure out and customers too. How do we make buying online as trustworthy as buying in person? Over here in China, top live stream sales anchor Xinba, yes, he named himself after Simba the Lion. He made headlines for selling a fake product that caused him to lose control of his multi hundred million US dollar e commerce empire, at least for now. Which led me to think a lot of people think that China only makes fake goods, from fake colognes to fake purses. You can go to New York City's Chinatown and get a fake version of everything from Apple AirPods to Louis Vuitton bags. But I thought this story is a great example of how China's actually fighting fake goods. Have you ever knowingly or unknowingly bought fake goods? Let me know in the comments below because I want to know. Live streaming e-commerce has taken China by storm in recent years. What is live streaming e-commerce? Well, think of it as a modern day infomercial or a modern day QVC that's done on a short video platform that people watch at home on their phone. It's usually done at night for four straight hours from 7 p.m. to 11 p.m. or from 8 p.m. to midnight. The live streamer usually has a you know live stream set up and is selling directly to the phone where all his followers are watching. They have real-time questions and he will give real-time answers. The most successful live streamers become huge influencers because they truly make a lot of money very quickly. There are three top live streaming e-commerce apps in China. There's Taobao, I'm sure you've heard of that. There's Douyin, which is actually the Chinese version of TikTok. I'm sure you guys have all heard of that. And there's a third one, which you may not have heard of, unless you've been reading the IPO news recently, which is Kuai Shou. Yes, they're about to go public in like a 50 billion US dollar valuation, crazy. China numbers are just crazy. Streamers will open their own channel on the app, sell stuff, partner with brands. Uh, they don't hold inventory, they just make a cut. So usually the cut is anything between 15 to 50%, but on average about 30% for anything they sell. Each of these three platforms have an influencer that sells the most. So Taobao has Weiya, Via, V-I-Y-A. Uh, Douyin or TikTok has Austin Lee, Li Jiaqi, who's known as the Lipstick King. That's right, he's a guy who was selling lipsticks. Very good looking. And Kuai Shou, which means quick hands, has Xinba, just remember Simba the Lion King, and Simba has 71 million followers on his channel. So Simba was born in a village in Northeast China in Heilongjiang province, which is the province that's close to like Russia and Korea and you know, that the Northeast cold up there. And he likes to say that he's a son of a farmer, which is what appeals to his fan base because the users of Kuai Shou are mostly rural users. Simba is one heck of a salesman. To give you an idea of how he can sell, uh, on the Singles Day Bonanza, which some of you may have been reading about now, it was found and started by Taobao like a decade ago. It's November 11th, so 11, 11, and it's all about Singles Day. So you buy stuff for yourself and it's become the biggest online shopping day in China. So on last year, November 11, 2020, Simba sold 288 million US dollars worth of stuff, of which he personally pocketed about a third. So, you know, just under a cool 100 million US dollars. He also spent 10 million US dollars on inviting 42 Chinese celebrities to his wedding, which was held in the Bird's Nest Stadium, also known as the National Stadium of Beijing. Plug, I actually competed in a horse riding show jumping competition in the Longines Masters there in 2015. It's really big museum. And you guys probably saw it when you watched the Chinese Olympics, the Beijing Olympics. All the Olympic games were held in there. So yes, Xinba had his wedding there, spent 10 million US dollars to invite 42 celebs there. 
And he even made his wedding a trending hashtag on Weibo with a hashtag that gone in something like 700 million views. Xin Ba even used his wedding to expand his business by holding a 90 minute live streaming session in which he sold 18 million US dollars worth of stuff. Wow, I think he's the only person I know that actually like made a profit from his wedding. Xin Ba is also famous for getting into fights with other live streamers and such scenes are so common that his Kuai Shou account has actually been silenced a few times because he's been violating the rules. Anyway, in October 2020, Xin Ba was selling the Chinese delicacy Bird's Nest by a local Chinese brand called Ming Zhi. What is Bird's Nest? Bird's Nest is made from the secretions of birds' salivary glands, mainly from the nests of swiftlets using solidified saliva that are harvested for human consumption. That's right, you heard it right, bird spit. It's actually very expensive. They can be priced up to 3,300 US dollars per pound, or for you Americans, 6,600 US dollars per kilo. And if you go at Chinese restaurants, you'll get a small serving per person for about 100 US dollars. So bird's nest soup, yan wo, is one of the most luxurious and expensive delicacies in China's cuisine for over 400 years now. So the bird's nest being sold by Xin Ba on his Kuai Shou account was sold at an unusually low price of 17 renminbi, that's like two and a half US dollars, per 100 grams. I mean, that's the lowest I've ever heard of for bird's nest. It's lower even than a bottle of nice water. Because of its production process, bird's nest soup has to be expensive. To give you some context, the more established local Chinese bird's nest brand, Xiao Xian Dun, sells on Tmall for 45 grams, which is like you know, half the serving that Xin Ba was selling, they sell for 100 renminbi, which is something like 15 US dollars. So of course, tons of people were attracted to this incredible offer. So on October 25th, Xin Ba sold 2.3 million US dollars of bird's nest in one night, netting himself just under a million US dollars. Not bad for a night of work. But three weeks later, a revelation would be made that would completely upend Xin Ba's multi-million dollar e-commerce empire. A customer who bought the bird's nest shared her dissatisfaction publicly with the brand. She said, all I wanted to know was why the bird's nest was all liquid. They did not respond to this, so I made a video. She was referring to a video that she uploaded on November 4th to Douyin, which is what TikTok is branded in China. And she reached a 10,000 renminbi, which is a 1500 US dollar settlement with a brand manager from Mingzhi the following day. As part of the agreement, she was asked to delete the video she posted on Douyin and also backtrack on some of her statements in a follow-up video. Hours later, on November 5th, Xin Ba chimed in and picked a fight. Xin Ba denied these claims and started raging online, threatening her, telling her, you must be paid by my competitors to come after me. And when the platform said that they would investigate, he even threatened the platform. He threatened Kuai Shou and said, with all my resources and connections, you will be in for it. Xin Ba disclosed to his 71 million followers the personal information of this poor customer. He put her phone number. He posted that publicly. So this poor customer got cyberbullied. She got hate phone calls. She got life death threats. They even from her phone number found her address and she got funeral wreaths sent to her door. Why did Xin Ba do this? Because she had disparaged the brand that he had endorsed. This poor lady's predicament is a window into China's growing live streaming industry, which has evolved from pure entertainment to including sales. Live streamers can become influential online celebrities and companies are increasingly using them to market their products and services. But lately, live streamers are coming under greater scrutiny for supposedly selling substandard products, as well as disingenuously exaggerating or overhyping products to increase sales. According to a customer survey done by China Consumers Association in 2020, over 37% of customers have found faulty products that they bought from live streaming sales. So when this customer who called out Mingzhi's bird's nest, Xin Ba, the live streamer selling them, who effectively became the brand's ambassador, was rattled. 
In a live stream on November 5th, Shin Ba said that he would sue her along with all other accounts on Weibo that had shared her post, sue them for slander. There's another person you need to know in the story. Wang Hai. Loved and feared in China. He's known for making investigative busts. He's like the Sherlock Holmes of fake products. In 1995, he busted a seller of fake Sony headsets. In 1997, he exposed 200 stores that were selling fake mobile phones. In 1998, he busted a string of state-owned drug stores that were selling a fake antibiotic pill. How did all this come about? Well, in 1994, the Chinese government approved a consumer protection law, Xiaofei that stated if a store sold a customer fake goods, then the customer could return it for double the purchase price. Not long after, Wang Hai went shopping with his cousin and was immediately suspicious of a pair of Sony headphones that his cousin selected. He said, the edges of the headphones were too rough and the packaging was too ugly. He bought two pairs and spent the next two weeks carrying them to various government agencies to check if they were real. Ultimately, the Technology Inspection Bureau confirmed his hunch. So Wang Hai went back and bought 10 more headsets and immediately went about demanding compensation. 10 months later, he had a double refund and a new career scouring stores for counterfeit goods, buying in bulk, and then demanding double the refund. Wang Hai said, the reason I did this was because I was skeptical the new law would be carried out. The second reason was for financial gain. In 2018 alone, he made 1.5 million US dollars. But since then, his sense of mission has evolved. I like the idea of doing something to help society, Wang Hai said. With the rise of live streaming, Wang Hai has actually been in the shadows. And it was only with this recent Sinba bird's nest incident that he came back into the spotlight. The turning point came on November 19, when Wang Hai accused Mingzhi bird's nest of being nothing more than sugar water. Customers had complained that bird's nest sold by Mingzhi was all liquid, when you should actually be able to see the gelatinous bird spit inside the soup. It was a mystery. What was this made of? It didn't act like bird's nest that anyone had seen before. So Wang Hai got his hands on the product, sent it into the laboratory, and when the results came back, he couldn't believe his eyes. This was not bird's nest. They didn't even try to make it look like bird's nest. It was just sugar water. A screenshot of lab tests that Wang Hai shared on Weibo showed that there were no proteins or amino acids, which is the main ingredient in bird saliva, but rather there was only carbohydrates and sugar. Wang Hai also said that the product costs no more than one renminbi, which is about 15 cents US dollars, to make. And he said that the bird's nest didn't meet production standards that were recommended by the relevant authority. In the next three days, Wang Hai posted 30 posts on this topic. News traveled very quickly. Everybody who had bought bird's nest from Simba found out, and the internet erupted saying, he's a liar, basically, the whole internet turned against this guy who's one of the top three biggest live stream sellers in China. Three days later, on November 22nd, Xin Ba responded to the lab tests, but things were already out of control. Not only were people talking about the bird's nest, consumers were also saying that other products they bought from Xin Ba, toothpaste, down jackets, mooncakes, all had issues. People's attention on this scandal and Xin Ba was exploding. Simba's team announced that they would cooperate with customers for refunds if they wanted, and Simba himself did a live stream acknowledging the fact that Mingzhi's bird's nest advertisements contained fraudulent information. Almost immediately, Mingzhi wiped its information and removed all of their products from all online retail platforms such as JD and Alibaba. Xinba then apologized to the poor lady customer that, whose life he had basically ruined because at this point she was in such a deep depression that she also lost her job. He offered to help her find a job and also take care of her child. She was a single mother, kind of late after you've already ruined someone's life. In, in any way, she declined his help. And then Xinba said he would pursue legal action against the company for making fraudulent claims. He added that his team would refund customers by more than three times of what they paid. So he would refund a total of 62 million RMB, which is like 8.9 million US dollars. On November 27th, Xin Ba did another live stream apologizing to his fans. This time he was crying, but it was too late. It soon came to light that the government was now investigating the case of the fake bird's nest. Now all of a sudden things are getting serious. 
It's not just about Simba losing his credibility and his platform and his fans. If he's found peddling fake goods, he could get arrested. And the fact that it's a health food product makes it even worse. Rumors are that Simba could get 15 years in prison. What happened in the end? Well, the Guangzhou municipality government slapped a 300,000 US dollar fine on Mingzhi Bird's Nest Company and a $138,000 fine on Xinba's e-commerce company. For what? For misleading advertising practices. Meanwhile, Kuai Shou said that they would suspend Xinba's account, with it has 71 million followers, for 60 days. Netizens said that this wasn't harsh enough. For a guy who can make millions in a four hour shift, the fine is relatively tiny. And 60 days suspension, it's inconvenient, but is it that big of a deterrent? Still, it shows that the Chinese government is listening and responding. They're trying to do something about it. And it's a good thing we have Wang Hai, who dedicates his mission to exposing fakes. Why did Xinba get off so lightly? Well, it's a little bit of a gray area because turns out the Chinese government did not have strict controls in place around bird's nest production and selling bird's nest. So it technically wasn't a fake product, but it was highly exaggerated and misrepresented. So what it broke was advertising regulations. Today, he still doesn't have control over his account and who knows what will happen when he gets it back. A lot of his fans and customers have lost faith in him. In response to this whole debacle, the Chinese government is now busy writing production and sales regulations around bird's nest and they've also come out with a new set of rules to rein in this hot new live streaming sales sector. So all this talk about fake goods has got me thinking about my own experience with fake Chinese products back then and now. When I was younger, I embraced them. Of course, for birthdays or special occasions, your family members will treat you with a very expensive bag. But when you're in college or you're a fresh grad, you don't have 10,000 US dollars to spend on a bag, which is how much I've actually paid for bags in recent years. I remember back when I was in middle school, we would cross the border from Hong Kong over to Shenzhen. It's a land crossing, mainly to go to Mission Hills Golf Course, which is at that time was, you know, sort of the biggest and best golf course in the area, and my uncles all love to play. And on the way, we would always stop at Lo Wu Sing, Lo Wu Shopping Mall, um, where that was just known amongst all Hong Kongers, all go there to buy fake goods. But what would we buy? Well, Shenzhen is also kind of like this tech industry, the tech valley of China. So they had a lot of electronics. We'd buy hi-fis, whether real or fake. We would buy bags. Anything you want, you could find. And as you walk through the dodgy looking mall, you'd be hustled left, right, and center with people saying, hey, hey, what do you want? Do you want a Gucci bag? Hey, what do you want, a Nike sneaker? You know, you could pick up a bag, a designer bag for 100 US at the time, or for what's considered a whore which is like class A fake products, a couple hundred US. So also not entirely cheap. There was one store in Lowu shopping mall that was considered the, the you know, fake of fakes that was really popular amongst a lot of Hong Kong Thai Thais. And if you bought enough and they felt you were a trustworthy customer, they would take you to the um fong, to the dark room in the back that was windowless and that could only fit six to eight customers each time. Uh, and, and whenever you went in, you'd always bump into friends from Hong Kong, like, oh, there's that auntie and there's that person. And some of them, you know, very, very rich and very socialite. In fact, one Hong Kong billionaire's wife, Nina Wang, who when her husband Teddy Wang uh, disappeared in a kidnapping, then became Asia's richest woman, she was well known for carrying fake handbags. Why? Because she said it was a good deal. That's the difference between the Chinese mentality and the Western mentality. The Chinese mentality is like, oh, I can get the same thing for less. The Western mentality is like, oh, it's fake, it's bad. The same thing with the cultural differences towards IP, trademarking, you get it. Although I do have to say, when I was in boarding school at Phillips Exeter Academy up in New Hampshire, when me and my classmates and my friends, some of us did trips to Boston, Boston Chinatown had plenty of fake stuff Hey, my American friends were all over that too. Now that I'm all grown up and making my own money, and now that I'm in the luxury sector in China, those days are far behind. But whenever I host American visitors or friends in Beijing, the first thing they ask me is, where's the fake market? Where is it? And I take them over to Silk Street Market in Beijing. It's all part of the China tour. But there is a difference between buying fake headsets and buying fake bird's nest. 
One is a product that people think is good for their health. No one goes to Chinatown to buy a real product for 100 bucks. What live streamer Simba did was he used this platform, he used the credibility that he built up from his audience to lie to them and sell them a product that they thought was healthy. If you're giving people something to ingest and lying about what's inside it, that can be a dangerous thing. All right, guys, what do you think of the Sinba Bird's Nest Gate scandal? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and tell me, have you ever knowingly or unknowingly bought a fake product? Why? I want to know. See you next time. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll be posting a new video each week who have tips and tricks that I think will help all of us lead a better life.